Welcome to the CBT Nuggets Mastering VMware vSphere version 4 certification series. I'm Greg Shields. Over the next 20 nuggets, we're going to spend some time together talking about VMware, and specifically the ESX version 4 and vSphere version 4 operating system and really the entire virtual infrastructure that VMware has created. Obviously, you're probably taking this series because you want to learn more about VMware and how to be successful with deploying and managing ESX and vCenter server. Those are the two topics that we're going to be spending all of our time with in this series. Installing, working with, managing, configuring ESX, and then ultimately layering vCenter server over the top of ESX for greater management across all of our different ESX hosts. In this series, the goal of this series is to help you really understand VMware vSphere version 4. But at the same time, the goal of this series is to also help prepare you for the VCP certification exam, the, the VMware Certified Professional. So with this series, we're going to spend a lot of time really talking about where VMware fits in your environment, but also relating in certain circumstances what you're seeing to what you're going to need to know for the exam. Now, as I said before, my name is Greg Shields, and in addition to being a V expert, I've been working with VMware for a long, long time, since some of the early days of ESX. And so I've had an opportunity to see the software and to see the platform mature over time as it's evolved into vSphere version 4 today. So as we go through this series, I'm going to spend some time also talking about my own experiences and to help you with some best practices for how you can be successful with your vSphere environment. Now, let's take just a little bit of time, too, and introduce really VMware, vSphere, Sphere and also the VCP certification. You know, you come here because you want to think about virtualization and you want to implement virtualization in your environment today. And though I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the core questions of what virtualization is, it's really important to recognize that virtualization is a solution that can be used for really bringing a good level of resource optimization to your environment. Virtualization effectively squishes a bunch of physical computers onto a smaller number of virtual hosts. And using it can make a, a a good dent in reducing the costs of your environment, improving the automation of your environment, and really making uh, your process of managing that environment significantly better. In this series, we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about how best to build, configure, and operate that environment as well. We're going to go through an entire process starting with the original installation of an ESX server, going through its configuration, and then ultimately adding vCenter over the top so that we can manage multiple ESX servers with that vCenter instance. As you'll see, when we look through the different uh, nuggets that are involved with this particular series, these nuggets are designed to build upon each other so that the information you learn from this nugget will help you further down the road with understanding the next topic in the series. And so it's really good to watch this series from start to finish at least the first time so you can come to understand all the different topics as they build upon each other. Once again, as I said before, I've got a lot of personal experience and best practices as we go through this process, and I want to spend some time talking about those that personal experience and those best practices so you really get a feel for how this can be successfully deployed into production. And then most importantly, too, as we go through all of this knowledge transfer, I really want you to think about that VCP examination and to prepare for that VCP examination. You'll see down here that the most important thing that you can look at for preparing for that VCP examination is the VCP exam blueprint that's found at www.vmware.com. The exam blueprint is a multiple page document that discusses all of the different exam objectives and the knowledge that you need to know to be successful to pass that exam objective. You'll find that as we go through each of the different modules in this series, each nugget's going to have a startup slide, and that starting slide is going to have a number of the different objectives and knowledge that you need to know to be successful for the VCP examination. While I might highlight over what those individual pieces are, keep those in the back of your mind because the topics that are mentioned in those initial slides uh, are based off of those that come from the blueprint and actually will be very good for targeting your knowledge and targeting your understanding so, again, you can be successful with with that VCP examination. Now, one of the questions you may be thinking is really having to do with virtualization and why use VMware virtualization, and also why not use VMware virtualization. As I said before, virtualization is really compressing lots of virtual, lots of physical machines onto a small number of virtual machines. That compression consolidates those machines down so a single virtual host can manage multiple virtual workloads. That gives you a greater sense of efficiency and also a greater sense of optimizing your available physical resources. If you think about 
about the average, the industry standard, the, 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 the amount of processor utilization or resource utilization in the industry today, you're talking about 5-7% of total resource utilization industry-wide. And so if you think about those workloads, your, your traditional Windows and Linux workloads that you have in your data center today, the, you are only using maybe 5 to 7% of the resources that you've purchased. So virtualization and virtualization atop VMware actually improves the optimized use of those resources so you can get more bang for the buck that you've already spent. You also get space power and cooling reduction because you have the opportunity to actually reduce and compress those servers together, eliminating your old servers, those that may be consuming power where they don't need to. VMware virtualization also helps with things like server refresh costs and rapid deployment. With server refresh costs and rapid deployment, these two tools can be made exceptionally automated through the tools that are provided through vCenter Server. You can rapidly deploy new virtual machines and bring those virtual machines online with very little effort. You don't have to go and rack and stack and take them out of the box anymore every time you need a new server, and that dramatically improves your ability to meet the needs of your business. You also have things like improved management and more efficient management of your, of your virtual machines. Machines. If you think about it, when I have a virtual machine, I have things like a greater ability to back up and restore those virtual machines, single file backup and restore. I have snapshot capabilities. I have the ability to move them onto different processors if I need to to ensure they have the right level of resources. So your management of those virtual machines grows more efficient because simply you are using a more optimized solution for providing those infrastructure services to your virtual workloads. Along that line, you also have the reduced risk of server instance failure. Again, with a virtual machine and with VMware ESX, you have the ability to snapshot those virtual machines before you end up doing something that may be scary to those virtual machines. If you've ever applied a patch to a virtual machine and thought, wow, I hope this patch doesn't cause a problem, only to see it actually cause a problem, you know this pain. So with the virtual machine, you can snapshot that virtual machine and then roll it back if it incurs a problem. With VMware virtualization also, you can create sensitive of high availability. So those servers, should they fail, can be automatically failed over to other hosts and be brought back online within a relatively short period of time, really, really improving how your service levels are between you and your business. And then finally, we have disaster recovery. Using VMware virtualization, you can have full, full disaster recovery between sites that is not cost prohibitive. Now, I can't talk about why VMware virtualization without talking about why not VMware virtualization. I get asked all the time, Greg, what is really the weakest link in VMware virtualization? And I tell people that really the virtualization platform software today, particularly VMware with its vSphere 4 product, is really bomb-proof. Really, the platform software these days has been made bomb-proof, and it's really not got a lot of the problems that we're used to seeing with some of the early editions of that platform software. On the other hand, however, administrators are not bomb-proof. And a lot of the failures that you see inside of VMware environments today have little to do with the software and more to do with administrators who weren't properly trained. So it's good that you're actually taking this series because that will help you with making sure you don't make those mistakes when it comes time. There are a couple of different reasons too why you might not think about VMware virtualization. Maybe you have the potential for server sprawl. If you think about it, when it becomes very easy for us to create new virtual machines, well, what do we do? We create new virtual machines. So the numbers of servers and desktops in your environment can grow very large if you don't have governance practices in place to ensure that only the most necessary are actually created. If you have a fear of the Linux operating system or if you have a fear of automation, those two can actually limit your involvement with VMware virtualization. ESX actually runs on top of a very highly tailored form of Red Hat Linux. It's almost so highly tailored it's almost not Red Hat Linux anymore. But really if you don't have at least some comfort level or willing to have a comfort level with the Linux operating system, then you're going to have problems with VMware ESX. Also, you'll find that there's a large level of automation associated with virtualization today too. And if you have a fear of automation, VMware virtualization might not be for you. Lastly, getting into actually using ESX and using especially some of the more advanced features like we'll be talking about in this series is going to involve an upfront cost. And for some organizations, those upfront costs can be relatively high, especially for those best features. Now, you need to make the determination whether or not you need those features and which features that you should actually deploy in your environment. If you have those features and if you need those features, then you're willing to absorb those upfront costs to get yourselves to a VMware virtual infrastructure. 
Now, actually, going through the prerequisites associated with this series, the prerequisites for this series aren't all that bad. If you understand the Windows OS, if you have a basic understanding of the Windows OS, you're going to do just fine. And if you don't have an understanding of the Linux OS, but at least you have no fear of the Linux OS, some very basic capabilities and some very basic experience with the Linux OS, then you'll be fine with the ESX portions of this series. You'll find that VMware has done a very good job of masking over the Linux portion of ESX with the vCenter server uh, UI, because that UI does most of the work that you're going to be doing. We'll be spending most of our time within the vCenter server UI and working with the vCenter client. We'll spend a very small period of time actually working with the Linux OS, because you don't really have to work with the, the Linux OS and the service console all that much with vSphere version 4. You really should have a basic knowledge of the virtualization concepts that are out there on the market today as well. If you understand what virtualization is, if you understand why virtualization makes sense, then that's going to really help you with this uh, with this series and also with VMware. Really, I'm not going to go into a lot of the very basics of virtualization because at this point, most of these virtualization concepts are conventional wisdom today. You also need to have a basic knowledge of networking and storage topics as well. If you can't necessarily configure a Cisco router or a Cisco switch, but you understand what that that process is. And if you don't really understand storage area networks, but you understand some of the basic topics associated with storage, you'll be fine for this series. We're going to be spending a lot of time talking about how to configure networking and storage from the perspective of ESX and vCenter, but we're going to leave those topics of the Cisco side and the EMC side of networking and storage to those other individuals in your environment. If you are those individuals, then not knowing what those networking and storage topics is important because when you connect those, when you make those connections inside of ESX for networking and storage, you're also going to have to make those connections at the outside on the SAN and in the network itself. You also need to have some sort of familiarity with the VMware workstation product, especially if you plan on following along while we're going through the demonstrations. I'll show you in the very beginning of this series how you can actually go through creating your own ESX servers on top of VMware workstation. So if you have a copy of VMware Workstation, it's not a very expensive purchase. You can go buy VMware Workstation and create an entire ESX infrastructure so you can follow along with these demonstrations as I go through them. That familiarity will help you because you'll need to understand Workstation to help you understand what ESX and vCenter can provide. And finally, just a desire to learn. Hopefully, with uh, all the things that I've got to tell you over the next 20 nuggets, you'll understand and learn some new things about VMware and really grow to understand why VMware has become the preeminent virtualization hypervisor in the market today. Now, let's talk a little bit about this series outline and the different nuggets that are going to be making up this series. You'll see that there are 20 nuggets in this series. And as I said before, this series is designed to start at the very beginnings with the installation of your first ESX server. When you first install that ESX server, we're going to go through that process of installing the, the Linux portion of the ESX server, and then ultimately configuring things like networking and virtual switches and dealing with storage and creating VMFS data stores. Once you've created those on the ESX server itself, that allows us to then bring those servers into vCenter server. And then we can actually manage ESX and ESXi using vCenter server. Now, once we've moved to vCenter server, we'll actually take off from the ESX configuration for the most part and work with all the different elements with vCenter server. Talking about managing vSphere and deploying and managing virtual machines and vApps and migrating virtual machines, that really exciting technology called vMotion. And then all the technologies that wrap around vMotion, like clusters, resource pools, and ultimately fault tolerance as well. Then we'll move into some of the more add-on topics with vCenter server plugins, P2V, host profiles, update manager, completing those vSphere upgrades if you're currently at vSphere version 3.5, and then finishing out with some of the more miscellaneous topics like backup and restore and troubleshooting and performance management. So you'll see here this series outline is designed once again to build upon each other so that you can understand as we go along how you will probably go through the process of implementing vCenter in your uh, environment today. So pay very careful attention to this series outline and follow along. Once again, if you have the ability to follow along with the demonstrations, that further uh, solidifies your knowledge, crystallizes your knowledge as we go through each of these nuggets. Now, in order to actually do these demos, we actually have to create a little CBT Nuggets network that we use for actually working with vCenter. Now, you'll see here that four different computers are actually created in addition to a series of, or a set of iSCSI storage. I've created this network so that it's very easy for you to also create this network in your own demonstration environment. You can actually download all the software you need today to actually run this environment without any cost to you. You can go to VMware's website and actually 
actually download ESX, a, a, a time-bombed evaluation of ESX, and you can actually get a sense of iSCSI storage from a, from a, uh, for free from a solution called Starwind Software that actually allows you to create this entire infrastructure here within your environment to follow along as we go through this series. We have a domain controller here, dc.nuggetlab.com, that is effectively handling domain services for this environment. <laughs>